Well, hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, hallelujah. Well, friends, today is July the 18th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the book of Matthew. Our text this morning is going to be taken out of chapter 21 and verse 22. And it says, all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, and you shall receive. Now, this text has been misused and misappropriated in so many ways that we can't even number. If you turn on the television on any day, you'll hear prosperity teachers teaching that Jesus Christ came to make your life full. His desire is to give you everything that you want in this life. And as flattering as those words may be, as appealing they may rest upon our ears, stop and think about it for a moment. Do you recall one occasion in Jesus's ministry of three years on planet earth, where he ever made someone's life better materially. Certainly he healed people. He cast out demons. He brought people back from the dead. But I don't recall one event where Jesus helped someone get a better job, where Jesus helped someone buy a bigger house. The only time that we see Jesus having anything to do with money is when he told Peter to go fishing, take the single coin that he found, and pay taxes. He didn't have a surplus of coins in the fish's mouth. He only got what he needed. And to be honest with you, we actually see the opposite. In Luke chapter 18, we are told the story beginning at around verse 18 of the rich young ruler. And what does Jesus tell the rich young ruler? In verse 22, he says, you lack one thing, sell everything that you have, distribute it unto the poor, you will have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So from a materialistic standpoint, Jesus does exactly the opposite of what we are being told today. Look at the story of Zacchaeus in chapter 19 of the same book, Luke. It tells us in verse 2 that there was a man chief among the publicans, and he was rich. He was chief. He was the head of the tax collectors. And he was very rich because he had been robbing people. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, but he could not for the press because he was a little man. And so he ran before Jesus. He climbed up into a sycamore tree so that when Jesus passed by, he would be able to see him. And it says in verse 5, when Jesus came to the place where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and he saw him. And he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he did make haste, and he came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood, and he said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods... I'll give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. And so in both of these stories, we see life becoming more challenged for these men as opposed to becoming more prosperous. But wait a minute. Our text says all things, whatever you ask in prayer, if you believe you will receive. So if you ask for a nicer car, if you ask for a better job, if you ask for a bigger house, if you ask for more money in the bank, this is a promise that you can stand on, right? Absolutely not. Because Jesus spoke in the spiritual realm. Everything Jesus had to say was spiritually, not physically. So when Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 10, I come that they may have life more abundantly he is speaking from a spiritual standpoint. So when, when he says all things in our text, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive, what he's talking about is spiritual things. If you ask for joy, you will receive it. If you ask for peace, you will receive it. If you ask for the Holy Spirit and his fullness in your life, you will receive him. 
If you ask for gentleness, patience, kindness, meekness, a calmer spirit, a ready mind, time to read your Bible, time to pray, these are the things if you ask for, he will reward you with. You see, there are so many people that take the name of Jesus and they think that they are his followers. And based upon the things they have in this life, they think they are blessed from him as a sign of his favor upon their life. But the Bible tells us he blesses the unrighteous and the righteous. So his blessings are no indication of his favor. And so are we to be grateful for the blessings that we have in our lives? Absolutely. But we must be very careful not to attach ourselves to them, to become bound by them. And most of all, when we bow our heads in prayer, we open our mouths and we begin to speak the words. They should not be for things based upon our own lusts and desires. That's what we're told in James chapter 4 verse 3. He says, you ask and you do not receive. Because you ask amiss, you're asking wrongly, that you may consume it upon your lusts. You're asking for things you want, not for things you need. And so when we read these promises by Jesus, as we have in our text this morning, all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. In other words, the things that we should be asking would be the things that would help us become better followers of the Lord Jesus. That our mannerisms, our characteristics, our attitudes would represent him and his kingdom and be a model of who he was when he walked the earth. And so my challenge to you today, friend, is that listen to yourself pray and be aware of how much of your time is spent asking for things based upon your own selfish needs and how much time is spent asking for the fruit of his spirit, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, meekness, gentleness. How much time is spent in examining ourselves and confessing before him every little detail in our hearts that we see that do not match his glory. And if you do that, friend, I think you will be shocked and surprised so often do we pray, and yet if we were to hear ourselves, we would be embarrassed by what we have asked. Not, Lord, give me more money, but Lord, show me, help me to be content with what I have. Help me to live within the means that you've blessed me with. And when you do that, friends, you'll find your life truly blessed and your heart truly full of joy. Well, I love you. I'm so thankful that you spent a few moments with us this morning. I pray that your journey will be blessed today. And I truly pray that you will be a little bit more like heaven and all that it represents and a little bit less like this world. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.